Hey, what's up everyone? This is Snicked back with another Royal Revolt 2 video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be continuing the series of base reviews that we've been doing. And uh, in this installment, we're going to look at the base of Doug SSB, or Doug uh, Barcelos. Doug, I'm sure I'm probably <laughs> pronouncing your name wrong. I'm sorry about that, but I did give it a shot. So, Doug SSB is... Um, at 2,291 rank on the global leaderboard. So that puts Doug well inside the top 1% of all Royal Revolt players that are out there. Uh, something to be proud of in its own right. And um, that means that he's, looks like he's sitting on or he's earned 2,596 trophies is, uh, is where he's at right now. So I would say that Doug is firmly inside kind of the mid middle tier of, of overall gameplay for Royal Revolt 2. And that's uh, something that definitely bears itself out in the design of his base, specifically looking at the layout and then also the defensive structures that he's using. Uh, we'll get into the layout itself in a little bit more detail in just a moment. Where I'd like to start here is over under the, uh, the defensive structures. So 2,596 trophies, um, he's, he's not yet, again, what we would consider to be a high-level player by any stretch. However, the composition uh, of his... Uh, of his base and the defenses that he's already put out there are are fairly are fairly advanced, and so he's been doing a great job of prioritizing um, advanced upgrades. And uh, that may um, anyone that does that is probably looking at relatively slow going um, in the beginning if they decide to prioritize um, these these higher level towers and blockades over say um, like lower to mid level towers and then barricades because the upgrade cycles are much more time consuming. Um, and so the turnover from one upgrade to the next takes much longer than these, uh, than these earlier level towers and, uh, and then the barricades as well. And it's also much more expensive. And so um, you're getting less loot when your trophy level is lower and your hero level is lower. And so it takes that, many more, that much longer and a much higher quantity of raids in order to get a sufficient level of gold necessary to move on to the next upgrade. So um, I'd be interested to talk with Doug a little bit further about how <laughs> how this is going for him and how he's doing. Um, I could be reading reading his level wrong compared to where, uh, to where his towers are at, uh, but nonetheless it'll be interesting to see um, how his towers are doing. I'm wondering if the Skull Towers and the Firebolt Towers are mostly very low level, um, and that could potentially do him a disservice uh, because he's not using, or he's not really using, you can see there he might have a couple of archer towers, but he's not really using archer towers, gargoyle towers, froster towers, um, perhaps not as important, but also not using snake towers, and there's there are no bomb towers at all, um, which are typically something that's fairly prevalent uh, until you begin to replace them with the bomb towers much later. But it seems like Doug has accelerated all of that just a little bit, so again, uh, it would be great to get into the raid here in just a moment and check out how that's going for him. Looking at Doug's wave composition, um, I'm also, uh, it's also very interesting to see uh, what's going on here. This is another, another base, uh, this is the third, third base that I reviewed in a row, the first two being Humdrum Bug, who's ranked level 8 or 9 now, I think, on the, uh, on the global leaderboard. And then the other one was just earlier today, Dog Waffle, and Dog Waffle is ranked about 65 on the leaderboard. But um, this is uh, this is something that's consistent with those, even though this is you know way out kind of in we'll say the the middle, um, the middle of gameplay and more of a mid tier uh, a mid tier base. And that is that this is a ranged DPS account and what I mean or a ranged DPS base. And what I mean by that is that the wave composition that Doug is deploying here is mostly consistent consisting of ranged damage or ranged DPS. So those are. What I mean by that is those are troop units that do damage from afar, and DPS means damage per second. Um, and so we have mortars in first place, so doling out as much poison damage as possible. Second place are um, our blasters, third place pyromancers, fourth place paladins, and so once again, <laughs> consistent with what Humdrum Bug was doing, and then also Dog Waffle, uh, paladins are in fourth place here in the wave composition. That may be a single wave that's nothing but paladins, or there could be one, you know, 
maybe two paladins that are scattered throughout the uh, the eight waves that uh, Doug is probably is probably using at this point. So very negligible melee damage being used uh, in this base. And then uh, following that up are archers down at the very end. And so we have archers and our blasters. Probably have archers just to kind of round out um, the, uh, the the wave the wave makeup. Uh, maybe Doug had a, a couple of points left and they just decided to allocate it to archers. I'm not quite sure. But um, it's a little interesting there for, to have our blasters and then archers way down uh, at the lower end. Maybe consider uh, potentially substituting knights instead of archers with those with those couple of points that are down there at the bottom. I wouldn't know without looking at the uh, the actual castle gate wave uh, composition that he has going there. But all in all, a ranged DPS base. And so um, as we looked at with Dog Waffle, that's the last um, video in this base review series that I did. But I'm particularly interested in how the wave composition the defensive structures, so the towers and the barriers, and then the actual layout of the base itself all kind of work together, how they complement one another. And so I do see here, I mean, Doug is basically using um, a, a, a slight variation or modification of the clover base, or the, cl the, the archetypical clover design. And that is, uh, you have an initial approach, you have a hard 180 degree turn, you go out and you have a big wide loop where you go way out to the left or way out to the right, in this case to the left, come back into a parallel path, creating a, a really tight, uh, concise choke point, and then, uh, and then the, uh, the path turns uh, straight up usually and goes straight on up to the base. So um, we'll be, I'll be, I'm very interested and want to take an eye here to see how kind of cohesive all these different pieces are working together. Um, another thing I'd note about the um, the wave composition is that uh, mortars, R blasters, pyromancers, that's five uh, five wave points, four and four. And so um, I'm not sure how how high Doug's leveled up his waves at this point. Like how how many um, yeah how many so how many morale points um, he's he's allocated to his waves and how far he's been able to level those up because those begin to get aggressive in terms of upgrades as well. Uh, upgrading from 20 to 22, um, or I'm sorry, 19 to 22 is 2 million per wave, and so if you have 8 waves, that's of course 16 million. And upgrading from, um, upgrading from 19, or I'm sorry, upgrading from 22 to 24 uh, per wave is 3 million, and so that's that's 24 million. So to go from 19 to 24 points is uh, 16 plus 24 is 40 million. Um, that's that's a lot of gold at any level, but I would think especially at Doug's level. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see whether or not he's compromised some of the damage that he could be doing with more paladins, maybe more archers, knights, um, in favor of these higher level uh, these higher level unit types, which are more expensive. I would also note, lastly, and Doug, this is uh, this is something important to consider here. Um, especially as you're transitioning uh, maybe from mid-level and certainly your base looks like it's, it's aggressively moving toward uh, the higher end of, of gameplay is that uh, you are missing frosters from your waves um, and I've <laughs> been uh, hitting on this point over and over again um, in videos and on uh, the Facebook group uh, where, where most of uh, most of the active Royal Revolt players uh, are, uh, are a member but um Frosters uh, add an essential component, really, to your wave composition. They're very important for slowing down the uh, the hero and the uh, the advancing raiding party. And the cumulative effect, if you include a Froster in every wave, which is something that I recommend that almost everybody does, especially from your level on up, um, is it can end up shaving off um, a good deal of time from the, uh, the from the raid. And uh, can make uh, a huge difference on whether or not the castle gate is ultimately brought down by the raider. So I would consider working frosters into your wave composition. It doesn't have to be every one. I realize with with fewer morale points, it, it isn't necessarily feasible to have a froster in every wave because you're concentrating more um, on damage than uh, than applying a slow effect. But it is something that maybe every other wave or something like that. But I would begin to think about how you're going to integrate integrate frosters. All right, and so we did an overview of the base um, uh, more or less just a moment ago. Uh, so it is a clover style base. 
Um, we go up, there's an initial uh, 180 degree kind of hairpin turn. As a spike pad there, it looks like a lone spike pad. I have two spike pads still in my base, um, so not denigrating those <laughs> outright, um, especially when there isn't necessarily a lot of room to, uh, to put more blockades or barricades and you don't want things to be too clustered up. Uh, I do notice there probably is an opportunity uh, to, to spread out the blockades um, all around. I see um, out into the clover, there's two blockades on each side, and, and all of those are are a, probably a little bit too close, and even a mid-level blade storm is going to be able to just whisk right through those and destroy them both. So that negates, um, really kind of negates the benefit of having um, a few of those blockades. So I might think about let, just letting that breathe a little bit more and, and opening those up just a little bit. Um, I also noticed, um, and, and one way that you may, might be able to correct some of this, is that there aren't any blockades that are up kind of in the final, we'll say the final quarter of the approach to the castle gate, even though you do have, um, you have used some tiles to put in a little turn there. So that's something where you might consider um, putting, uh, uh, experimenting with putting uh, a tower up there and um, and even a blockade as well um, just to spread things out and so you're spreading your damage out and not making it quite so concentrated because the, the downside to making your damage so concentrated here in this clover on these corners where you have the towers clustered and in the middle of the clover where you have five towers is that um, by clustering if somebody comes in with some higher level or some some nicely upgraded whether it's firestorm blizzard Sonic Blast, uh, Blade Storm, they're going to be able to they're going to be able to take down multiple towers and again multiple blockades at one time. So let's see how the, all this works out in practice. I'm expecting that at that choke point um, that's created that we're going to see some ranged DPS there. And that ranged, especially since this is as I called it, a ranged DPS base. And we'll see how many opportunities there are for the ranged DPS to really shine um, all right, so I'm just gonna spawn some Pyromancers and some R Blasters here. So we have a mix of ranged DPS. There's a Mortar, Pyromancer, R Blaster, and some Paladins. So that's actually all around a, a pretty good, a pretty good mix. And uh, across the way here, we do have a uh, we do have a Firebolt Tower. So I'm gonna bring out some cannons here real quick. Let them roll up and uh, and see if they can't take out that tower go over here and it's always really important to protect your cannons uh, especially if you, if you have a, a close choke point like that uh, because uh, they are somewhat fragile so we had two skull towers and uh, this tower so we have three towers clustered right here together I thought one of them might be a little further back but that is <laughs> there's no easy way to say it that is uh, that is a no-no that is definitely something you do not want to do just because um, even somebody at a much lower level could go in there and just breeze right through. So you watch what I'll do here. And again, this is with a max level Sonic Blast. But I just took down four of your towers, um, and that's partly a function of it being max level Sonic Blast and those being lower level towers. But understand that that's also a function of the towers being clustered together. Um, I wouldn't be able to get to those towers as quickly as I could, or as easily and effortlessly as I could, um, unless they were bunched up together the way that they were. So that again speaks to the uh, the idea of letting the base breathe and spreading things out. So you notice that the cannons that I deployed or the R blasters were able to shoot across uh, to the upper right here and take out this firebolt tower. Uh, that's a good principle to keep in mind for all bases because uh, that that choke point is uh, just a, like by now a classic uh, design mechanic of of any of any I won't say of any good base but of m most good bases uh, we have no um, resistance up here at the castle gate whatsoever so it's just me and the castle gate um, and so uh, cannons and R blasters are the best uh, at at taking down uh, those diagonally situated um, those diagonally situated firebolt towers or skull towers um, that are designed to lay down suppressing fire and uh, prevent the, uh, the raider and the raiding party from effectively getting through there. So I like, I mean, the, the idea there is that it takes, you have to go all the way through the clover to get back around to take out that tower, but that can be negated um, if somebody's smart enough to bring out a cannon or bring out a bunch of arb blasters and the, um, the targeting AI of those units locks onto that tower as it did in this case. So very good base overall, Doug. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, 
feel free to hit me up in the comments or on the Facebook page. Thanks a lot.